Hello guys, welcome to my channel. This is your girl Nurse Momo. As you all know, this channel looks uh, forward to bringing you the best information and try as much as possible to help um, my subscribers. Today I have with me Train, um, all the way from the US, currently in Ireland. Today's video is actually for my social care workers. So welcome Train and thank you for honoring my invitation. Yeah, thanks for having me. Can you please um, introduce yourself to my viewers? Yeah. So my name is Trent. Um, I'm from the U.S. I'm from Iowa in the U.S. in particular. Uh, and I moved uh, here to Ireland um, in October of last year. So I'm freshly new. I just uh, getting settled here. So thank you. I just want to know, OK, we all know that the U.S. is known as a very developed country and most people actually love to move to the U.S. Yeah. Um, I'm very much surprised to see that you actually moved to Ireland. So my first question would be that why you actually decided to work in Ireland? Well, the 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 kind of short answer is I wanted a new experience. You know, I moving moving here, you know, I'd spent much of my life living in the Midwest USA, which is a a very kind of small area, very rural, very agricultural and um, you know, I wanted to live in a city um but, um, you know, when I was an undergrad, I did an, like a study abroad program um, and I was living in the south of France and I had like the best experience. It was life changing for me. It was the really the only time I'd been away for an extended period of time from like the Midwest. And I kind of craved the opportunity to do it again. So um, I uh, the, this, the circumstances were, were decent enough. Uh, and so I started the process of uh, getting my license and getting my um, accreditation over here. And I made the move, uh, like I said, about um, nine months ago now. Wow. Already nine months. Yeah. Yeah. Close to nine months. <laughs> okay. Um, can you please take us through the process um, of moving to Ireland as a social worker? Okay. Absolutely. I have lots of people in my DM, lots of subscribers asking me how they can equally move in. Um, as social workers. So can you please take us through the process? Absolutely. So the first process that kind of, um, the first step in general is just kind of taking a look at what you want. You know what I mean? So like, um, you know, if you're looking at moving to Ireland to be a social worker, of course, this is just my experience. And this is kind of what I've, this is, this is the process that I took uh, to yeah. get here. Um, there may be other processes out there, but this is the process that I used to, to kind of come over here. So the first step was I identified a country. So I was, I was in the U.S. Actually, when I started the, um, the process, I was on a holiday in the Dominican Republic, uh, mm -hmm. coincidentally. Um, so, um, I was, I was on holiday. It was, I had, I'd put in some consideration of which country did I want to move to. So the country I chose was Ireland. Uh, um, reason behind that, um, you know, I, I'd speak in, spoken with some people here. Ireland has a good quality of life. Um, the people are, are, um, you know, friendly. Um, yeah. the, the, the conditions are very nice. They're, they're very good. Um, and so that was kind of the, the reason that I chose Ireland in particular. Um, Malta was actually also on the list. Um, but the, the job market for, um, for social workers is a bit lower in Malta from at least what I could see. So, um, that's very interesting not to cut you when I was also looking for a place to move to Malta was the first place, I think after UK or the second place after UK, then I finally settled on Ireland. Really? Cool. Okay. Yeah. That's interesting. <laughs> okay. Yeah. From Malta. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so I chose Ireland and, um, particularly depending on the context of what you're needing to do. So for me, um, uh, there wasn't any type of language, you know, Ireland, the, the primary language is English. So I didn't have to worry about any kind of, you know, making sure that I would like had any language kind of thing, yeah. uh, to, to work on. Um, so, um, and you know, of course I have the, I have to have the, employment permissions, I'd need to have the immigration permissions. But really, the first step that I took was to um, get my professional licensure. So for okay. social workers and several allied health staff, um, the kind of overseeing the accredita accrediting body is an organization called CORU, so C-O-R-U. In Ireland. Um, 
in Ireland. Exactly. Coru, my understanding, because I mean, I like I said, I've, I'm new here myself. Coru is relatively new itself, um, mm-hmm. and they've kind of are the the body that protects the public um, and accredits the the staff. So for social workers in particular, and I believe they also do things like medical scientists, physios, um, occupational therapy, dietitians, etc. Um, so the first process, if you did not obtain a degree in um, Ireland is, um, you have to, uh, um, go through the process of what's called recognition. So the recognition process took me the longest, um, uh, time. It took me about 10 months in particular. Um, so the process of recognition, essentially there's an online portal and it's on the Koru website. When you go through and start the application process, it's an online portal where they essentially ask you a lot of information about who you are, what's your background, where did you get your degree? Um, what is some of your work experience? Have you, um, are you currently working with an, under an accrediting body? And you also have to have a bunch of different types of, um, artifactual kind of like um, evidence, like things of evidence to, to produce yeah. to them to make sure that you are who you say you are. Okay. Um, interestingly, a lot of these um, documents need to be notarized. So okay. um, a lot of individuals would need to go to like a notary public or they would need to go to a solicitor, commissioner of the oaths um, okay. and uh, get these documents stamped as well. So my background, I have my bachelor's in social work and my master's in social work. And so part of that process was I needed to produce documents from several different schools as well. Like what documents? So um, my transcripts were one in particular, essentially saying that I completed the course, I completed the program. Uh, These were the respective grades that I got completing these courses. Um, I needed a notarized copy of my diploma. Um, There were a few specific forms that needed to be stamped and signed by the school themselves. Mm -hmm. So there it's essentially a a document that's generated by Koru that kind of synthesizes uh, a bunch of the information that you've presented to them. And it's the school's way of saying, yeah, you know, he actually did do this. So um, that uh, those documents all need to be complete and it takes time. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So particularly when you're working with external systems. um, So like if I needed to go to the university I did my undergraduate degree in, I needed to go to the school that I did my master's degree in. Um, I needed to go to the Iowa Department of Public Health, which was the licensing body of social workers in the state of Iowa, which is where I'm Mm -hmm. from. So you have to go and you have to work with a lot of systems and then you have to get a lot of author authorization. So the process takes time. It's not quick. I think Um, it's very similar to that of the nursing in Ireland as well. Okay. Okay. Sure. So after, after you get all your documents submitted, um, you go through a process where Koru will then, um, once you submit your application for recognition, um, Koru then essentially builds a pro, like a, like I would even say almost like a profile for you. So yeah. what does that mean? That essentially means they take all those documents and they give it to a person who reviews them. Okay. Um, once the person reviews them, they'll either determine that they have all necessary information and then it'll go to an assessor. Okay. Um, the alternative would be is they need more information and then you'd have to produce more information. Produce more information. Oftentimes, at least in my, at least I should say in my experience, um, when you go, even if they say you have all the documents, once it gets to the assessor, the assessor will come back with more questions. More questions. Um, the assessor will ask for more information. The assessor will ask that this information gets signed off essentially by yeah. other people. Yeah. So that process itself, again, kind of is done. So yeah. once it gets in the hands of the assessor, at least my understanding of the process, and there's videos that explain this process on Koru, um, they, um, it, it essentially gets, um, uh, um, the assessor kind of comes up and they essentially say that this person seems to meet qualifications that we expect of persons here in Ireland because they match your expert, like your, your application to what they expect of the Irish trained social worker. 
Um, and then they give like uh, they give that feedback to another organization, and then it has to come to a vote. And uh, anyway, so when they when they give you uh, feedback back, so once the board votes, they give you one of three decisions. So one is um, that they do not recognize you. So that okay. means that, that blatantly your application does not meet sufficient standards, and they will not recognize you. Yeah. The second is uh, that they will recognize you on conditions. So the okay. conditions could be something like an aptitude test, or it would be something like um, a period of adaptation. Okay. And then the third, the third is that they will just outwardly acknowledge you. They will outwardly yeah. recognize you. I was very fortunate on my application that I just got out like um, accredited outwardly. I didn't have yeah. to do a period of adaptation. I didn't have to do an aptitude test. I, I was able to kind of go right through with all the documents yeah. that I produced in mm -hmm. the information. So after you get a determination and it comes to you through a letter um, uh, of whether they acknowledged you, then you can go through the process of um, registration. Before we go to the re registration, with the web recognition, you have to pay any fee? Yes. Yep. Okay. How, how much? Uh, is that? I yes. want to say, if I remember correctly, it was like four hundred and fifty euro. Okay. I want to say so. It was like okay. four hundred and fifty euros, four hundred and sixty euro, or something okay. of the sort. So yeah. So um, once I had my determination, um, so then I went through recognition. Okay. So recognition is another one hundred euro, and it's another okay. application. <laughs> yeah. Um, that process required vetting. So you needed to go through the Gardi vetting, which is like okay. a police clearance, essentially. Um, and then um, you had to turn in your letter of recognition. You had to uh, make like attestations, essentially okay. saying, I've never committed a crime. If you're from another country, they will often also require that you um, uh, generate a police clearance from the countries in which you've lived. Okay. So for example, um, I needed to get vetted by the FBI. So the Federal Bureau okay. of Investigation in the US. Mm -hmm. um, so I had to go and there was a fee associated with that. I had to go to the post office and get my fingerprints taken. Then they ran a background check. They had to generate yeah. a report and then they mailed that report to me, which was subsequently then sent on to Coru again. Oh, okay. So um, you have to go through vetting, um, and I think that's in the recognition process. I don't think it's registration, or I think that's the registration process, not the recognition. So that process in particular, um, you have to provide those, I believe you have to provide those two reports. So, okay. um, and then um, once everything kind of clears, then you will be given, you'll be issued something essentially saying you're now registered and here's your registration number. Okay. That's cool. And when it comes to job search, was it difficult um, um, searching for a job in Ireland as a social worker? I So the number, my understanding is the number one employer of social workers in Ireland is the HSE. That's yeah. that's my understanding, if I, mm -hmm. if, I, if I understand correctly. So what I did, so my experience, so I worked for three years as a social worker, about three years as a social worker in the U.S., um, as a psychiatric social worker. And my area that I really like is, well, I worked for about three years in social work in general, um, but I worked for, I want to say maybe a year and a half, a year and a half or two years ish, um, as a psychiatric social worker. And that yeah. area was kind of the area that really stood out to me. And that's the area that I really wanted to go. So I knew that that's kind of the area that I wanted to be, but of okay. course you can't necessarily always be super choosy on that. Yeah. So what I did as soon as I got registered um, is I signed up with an organization called the IASW, which is the Irish Association of Social Workers. Okay. And the Irish Association of Social Workers has like different trainings for people. Um, it's a, it's an association body. So like um, if I needed resources for F, as a social worker, I could turn to them if I needed um Oh, anything particularly related to the profession, like in terms of like resources or support, that would probably be the first organization I would turn out to. So the IASW will send out emails about what jobs are available right now as, yeah. as a social worker in Ireland. That's cool. 
because otherwise you kind of have to do this thing of you have to just look at random hospitals and see yes. where they're, you know, but the IASW and the IASW has a fee and stuff associated as well. Um, however, they send you job adverts, so yeah. adverts of jobs, and you can take a look to see, is this job mm -hmm. kind of, of matching my interest? Mm -hmm. Is this something I want to do? Is it something yeah. I, I think I would like? Or do I meet the minimum qualifications? Mm -hmm. Um, and then, um, based on that, I, I applied to a couple, um, and, um, I was actually out in Ireland, um, visiting with my mom, like right before I, I moved oh. and I got called in for a job interview, uh, wow. my current employer and I did the interview and I was offered the job and I, I came out. So, um, it's, it's a process. And yeah. I would say between the time that I started the recognition to the time that I actually moved over, uh, that process took approximately a year. Wow. So approximately a year to finally move. That's not bad. That's not bad because we, the nurses, some people take like um, 16 months, almost like 24 months to move. Even though mine was like, um, I think mine was like 10 months. I was lucky enough yeah. to move in within 10 months. Yeah. So yeah. I think it's not bad. A year, yeah. I know Ireland for a year. It's okay. It's good. <laughs> okay. Now I want to ask about salary wise. Yeah. I usually like to know um, like the range. You know, I know Ireland usually pays based on experience. When it comes mm -hmm. to the nursing aspects, I can just give a range um, for zero years of experience, like 13 years. When is it the same for social worker? And then can you give us a range like uh, annually? Okay. I know online, so the HSC, I think online has a website of like, like a, partic a particular salary scale. Yeah. Um, and you can kind of reference that. Um, at least from what I've seen in job advertisements. So yeah. like advertisements that have posted like how much the, the starting pay or how much the, um, the kind of ending pay I've seen. I've seen advertisements running from, and this would be like a full-time post, yeah. this wouldn't be part-time. So for full-time, I would say somewhere probably between 45 and up to 65,000 okay. is probably That's the generalized perfect. range. Yeah. That, it, and of course, it very much depends like on it individual depends. salary, on your yeah. experience. It depends on the type of work you're doing. Are you a yeah. basic trade yeah. social worker? Are you a senior social worker? Mm -hmm. um, and, um, and then, yeah. So it, it really depends, but I have seen posts generally more senior, like team lead, um, kind of like higher up posts would be much more up towards like the, the 60, 60, okay. 70,000. Um, cool. but that would be like, you know, you need to have worked probably in Ireland for some time. <laughs> oh, okay. Thank uh, you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Well, let's talk um, about the multidisciplinary team. Being a social worker, if you can just take us briefly to the role of um, a role of a social worker in a multidisciplinary team, and also could you kind of let me, let us know? Do you really enjoy your work in Ireland? So, two questions. <laughs> yeah, the 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 answer to the do I enjoy my time in Ireland? I really do. Um, I I I really value. Um, kind of the work culture. I really value the, um, I, I'm very lucky that I have a very good team that I work with. Um, I also am very, um, uh, yeah, um, I, I, I get a lot of support from my colleagues as well. So those, those aspects uh, in my particular post, I, I really, really appreciate. Um, in terms of the role of social work on the multidisciplinary team, um, so the social work, social work is really person and environment. So what does that mean? So there's an interrelationship. So there's not like there, there, there's an interrelationship, meaning that both, both relate and both influence the other thing between a person and their environment. So like, for example, if I'm a person, let's say I'm a small child and I'm living in a very chaotic or with a lot of domestic conflict as a child, it would make sense that I would feel chaotic myself. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So my role is really to get an understanding of who is the person, 
what does their, their environment look like? So yeah. who are the people that they work, who are the people that they associate with, who are the people that they choose to engage with? What is their living situation? What is their, um, uh, um, what does their financial situation look yeah. like? So some of those more practical things that are associated mm -hmm. around a person. Yeah. Um, uh, and what are the particular areas that are going well? So that would be from a strengths perspective, what are some things that we can really capitalize on? And yeah. what are some areas that are maybe struggling or what are some areas for improvement? And my role is to be able to help enhance functioning of a okay. enhance an individual's functioning within their community or within their environment. So okay. that may look like um, helping an individual get connected with financial resources if financial struggles are a challenge. Yeah. Um, it may look like helping a person um, get connected with um, domestic violence services if a person's yeah. in, a, in an interpersonally violent situation or yeah. there's some marital violence. Um, it may look like getting person connected with emergency housing services if a person's experiencing homelessness or if they're at risk of having no affixed abode. So okay. my, um, my role particularly relates to helping a person get connected. Now, why is that important in healthcare? In healthcare particularly, you know, we know as healthcare people that, that yeah social determinants of health, right? Mm -hmm. So let's talk about like a person who's diabetic. This person yeah. who's diabetic does not have a stable place to live. They do not have any income and they're reliable uh, and they don't necessarily always know when they're going to get their next meal. Well, it would make sense from a social perspective yeah. that this person is struggling to manage their type mm -hmm. one diabetes because yeah they don't necessarily have appropriate access to food. Their financial situation might pose strain on their ability to access medication. Mm -hmm. So my role really particularly relates to individual and individuals functioning at home and in the community to be able to enhance their ability to function in society yeah. and within their communities that, they, that they're associated with. Wow. So... What does that look like on the team? Um, so that's social work in general. What does that look like in the team? So um, my role is really working with individuals. Um, so at the moment, I'm working in mental health social work. So I do a lot of one-to-one -one, um, kind of one-to-one uh, -one sessions with individuals doing, uh, doing like a psychosocial assessment mm -hmm. or a generic assessment to get a sense of who is a person, what does their environment look like, and what are their struggles. Um, and then in times when there are struggles, I work with that person to devise some kind of meaningful plan to be able to address those needs from the psychosocial situation. So oh. that may be working with a person to try to you know, get involved with um, other different types of community groups that might look like encouraging a person to get in contact with or signposting information on domestic violence resources that may look like getting a person connected with more kind of family therapy or marriage therapy if, if it's needed. Um, I also am responsible for doing groups in my particular role. So a lot of my groups particularly relate to surprise interpersonal skills. So <laughs> relationships, communication yeah. kind of stuff. So that's, that's my role. Okay. So when it comes to work balance, as opposed to the USA, what do you have to say? Uh, much better. Right? <laughs> I'm going to be it's a lot better. Um, cool. In the US, you know, I, and, and I attribute this to a bit of a cultural difference in the US, mid, uh, US, like Midwest USA, there's a big emphasis on productivity, right? Like there's a mm -hmm. big emphasis on, um, a person doing something, a person working, a person yeah. being productive. Um, and oftentimes, particularly in terms of social work and mental health and that kind of stuff, you know, you need time for you, you know? Yeah. So if you're constantly just trying to be productive all the time, it contributes to a bit of a culture of chaos almost, yeah. you know? And so I've appreciated particularly 
um, uh, the, the, the difference in culture with respect to a greater sense of appreciation of not having to be productive at every waking moment of the day. Um, it's okay to take a walk by the sea on a Saturday oh. afternoon. It's okay to go um, out for, you know, if you, um, you, you can go out for a meal or for a pint with yeah. friends, you know, that's okay. You know? Pint, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So um, I, I have found the transition to be great myself. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah. Any advice from you to all other social workers looking at you also having the dream of moving to Ireland, any advice to them? It can be hard, you know, it yeah. is, it is, it is hard and it is a tricky process and it requires a big degree of a willingness, a, mm -hmm. a big degree of um, vulnerability. And it does mm -hmm. require a big degree of um, investment and like stick it to itness almost, you know what I mean? Like you have to stick to it. Like it would have been really easy and don't get me wrong during the like accreditation process. <laughs> There were many times where I wanted to throw my hands up in the air and just be like, it has been oh, no. <laughs> months now, and I'm tired of yeah. reaching out to schools yeah. for more information. But what I can say is it is a long process. It is tedious. The, the process of moving in itself and making new friends, like I didn't have any friends here when I moved, yeah. you know, it's, it's different and it is a new but at least in my experience, there may be challenges that come up, particularly when you first move here. But once you get settled, I will say I've really had a great experience. And, you know, I'm it's something that I'll bring with me the rest of my life. You know? Oh, that's so touching. That's so lovely. Thank you so much, Ryan. So Thank this you. video is actually, um, I'll say, dedicated to Madeline Mukulu. Okay, so Madeline is also a subscriber on my YouTube channel, and she's also a social worker in Kenya. So oh. she actually got to my DM, and then she actually encouraged me to also post a social worker. And I think oh. I was two months ago, and finally here we are. So Madeline, Hello. thank you so much, <laughs> and um, also for encouraging me to um, get on. Finally, I'm with Trent here today, and then I'll say that this actually goes to you, because to you, and also... Um, to my other subscribers as, as well. If you have any other topic that you want me to actually touch or any suggestion, kindly just drop it at the comment section as well. Thank you so much, Train, for um, coming through. I really appreciate it because all the information that you gave was very vital. So yeah. guys, this is the end of today's session. Um, I trust that this video has been of great benefits. As we usually do, it, kindly remember to like this video, share as well, and also remember to drop a comment. Um, remember to also follow me on my social media platforms, on TikTok, on Instagram, and also on Facebook. Just type Nest Namumu1, and then just follow me. If you need to ask me anything at all, you can just email me on nestnamumu1 at gmail.com, and I'll definitely reply to you as well. Thank you all for always passing through. <laughs> Bye.